Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square. Welcome to our free live Wednesday webinar on February the 3rd of 2021. Now with each one of these free Wednesday webinars, we always have brand new people joining us that's never been to any of my teachings before. They maybe never saw me have a lecture at a quilt guild or even knew that Jody Barrows and the Square and the Square was a quilting thing. So Square and the Square is a system, it's an approach to the way that you piece your quilts. And we have been around over 30 years now. So we're going to do, uh, we have a lot of new people joining us today. So we're kind of going to start at the beginning of the system and we're going to show, um, do what we call some pattern adapting, show you the different units you can make, how to make them any size that you want to make them. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the products because they're brand new to all of the products. Now, for those of you that have been joining our free Wednesday webinars for this year of 2021, you know that I always suggest that you have a webinar notebook and that you take notes during the webinar and even put little tabs on them because there'll be different things that you want to be able to refer back to and say, okay, now what did she say? How did she do that? Because you'll be able to go back and watch replays from this uh, video today from this live webinar. So make sure you right now go, don't wait, get a pencil and paper. Um, you know, if you don't have a notebook you're working out of, go ahead and take notes today and then you can transfer them over to your, your real legitimate Wednesday webinar notebook. Okay. Then, um, also I want to, um, tell everybody that's new that you can go back and watch the other Wednesday webinars that we've had. And we have a theme this year that we're just going to keep building. We started with uh, stuff that was very simple and easy. We started with a four patch quilt in January. And then the second quilt we did was just a real simple construction of a quilt. And then the next week we did kind of an option overview like I'm going to do today. And then I think maybe the next one was last week. And we did this one here, the uh, East Meets West. And then uh, today uh, in February, we're going to work on an overview again. So make sure you go back and watch those, take notes and get your notebook up to date and going. So this one here was the very first one that we did and it was called Road to Nowhere. And it has the uh, four patch in it. And so this was the Road to Nowhere. Now, when you look at quilting and have the approach for quilting that I take as in how to make every quilt turn into a very simple quilt, I have um, just a few, I have two main books and then I have five rulers. And so I'm going to tell you about those rulers and what they do. So one of them is the four patch tool and the four patch tool helps you make four patches any size and you just get really clean, nice precise work. And I have had people say, oh, four patches, nine patches, I can make those. What's the big deal about that? Why do I need a tool to do it? And then when they get the tool or they see the demo and they do it, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so simple. This is so clean. This is so easy to do. So go back and watch the very first January a webinar and you can see a demo on the four patch and nine patch ruler. So, and we have some bundling on the website. So if there's multiple things that you want, then you know, if you bundle stuff together, then you get a better price. We do have some bundles on there, don't we, Steve, mm -hmm. after I say that? Okay. So this is the four patch tool. It makes four patches any size that you want. And this is the nine patch tool. It makes nine patches any size you want. Now, probably the most common question is, does the nine patch ruler make four patches? No. Does the four patch ruler make nine patches? No. Go back and watch those videos. You can see how they work and you can get lots of different answers that you need for your four patches and nine patches. Now, um, um, when I look at quilts and when I first started de designing the system that uh, we do, what I saw was different squares that come together like four patches and nine patches. And then I saw all of these different triangle units that come together to make all these beautiful quilts and units. And I thought, why can't we help improve on the human element? The human element is the cutting, the sewing, and the pressing. And that's where the human can either lose perfection 
or gain perfection. So with our system, we do the human element of the cutting and the sewing and the pressing. Then we use the tools, the rulers, to trim it up and we get all of these different triangle shapes. And of course, you can make them any size that you want. And we have, you can go back, um, if you're a premium club, you can go into the portal for premium club, which is our subscription club. And if you want information on that, you can just email us. Let me give you two uh, or let me give you three things of information. We have a, our email address is steve at squareinasquare.com and you can email there. You can also go to our website squareinasquare.com and then we have a text number. And so the text number, I'll give it to you for those that are new, is 817-713-713. 2879. So 817-713-2879. Now, anytime you're working on a project, you have a question about a quilt, you need to know how to make a certain size of flying goose, you can use this text number. Now, um, we, would, we can get to your quilting questions much faster with the text number. Um, the email is more for, um, you know, I need to change an order, I need to add something to my order, What's my tracking number for my order? How do I find something in the portal? Those kinds of things are for the email. And you do have to be patient with the email. We have lots of emails that come in every day. And so sometimes it can take a little bit of time to get to you, but we'll get to you just as soon as we can. Steve does a great job. And for those of you that are new to us, Steve is my husband. He's a retired pharmacist. So he's very patient and very kind with you to help you learn whatever it is you need to learn, whether it's navigate a website, or um, help you with your order, whatever it is, he'll do that for you. So um, go to, um, we have these webinars where we do teaching. We have the regular Square and a Square Facebook page where you can go in and join and watch videos. And then we have our Premium Club Facebook page. And if you're Premium Club and you're new, then you just go to your Premium Club portal and look for the Option Overview Series. If you're not Premium Club, you can hunt around on Facebook and you can find what we call the Option Overviews. And what we suggest that we do, you do is that you start a notebook and you go in and you learn the system uh, piece by piece by piece. And as we get started with our demos, you'll see what we're talking about. You'll make um, one page for the very first part we call option one, and then the next part, option two, and option three, and so on. So you can see how to make your option overview notebook. And of course, the options are the different triangle units. Now, when we go in here and we start trimming on our squares to make our quilts, there are three rulers that you can use. You don't have to have all three. They each one will cut the options, but they each one um, have added benefits too. And as I use them, I'll tell you about them. We have the, the grande, the multi-purpose one, the big one. We have the one that is the mini ruler, and we have the one that is the original. And if you're just getting started, then we recommend that you get started with the original one. And in the demo today, I'm gonna to use all three. And if you have questions about them um, and what they do and all of that, then uh, we'll help you with that as we get going. But it's kind of nice to have an overview of it so that you know where we're headed. Okay, and then there's two main books, and these are your reference books. This is the Square and a Square Reference Book 1, and this is the Square and a Square Reference Book 2. This one makes the triangle units that start out with a square in the middle, and this one is the one that makes the triangle units that start out with a diamond in the middle. Now, that's kind of, if you're brand new to us, you're maybe a little bit lost on, on reference on how I'm referring to it. But this does the first 17, which are the square, and so, so one through 17, and this does 18 through 39 that start out with a diamond. So this does the regular 45, 90 degree angle points that are in almost every quote you make. And this one is the long, thin points like with a storm at sea or a peaky and spike, some of that. And I'm not sure how much we'll get into the diamond book today, but um, you can, um, go to your, your portal for your premium club and find more diamond stuff or um, snoop around on our Facebook page and see what you can find. But these are the reference books, the ones that I always uh, refer back to. So let's get started on making some pieces, making some quilts. Okay, so we can see all of our table down here on our demo table. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this is what we call the basic square. It's a square in the middle with strips on the side. You can do any size, you can do any color, and the different ways we use the ruler to trim it up, we're gonna get all of these different triangle shapes that you need for every quilt that you make. And after we show some of the options, we're actually gonna take a pattern and adapt it over. Of course, we have patterns where we've already done all that for you, but I want you to see how easy it is that you can take any design, any pattern, any block, and adapt it over um, to the system. So the way that we get this, um, what we call the basic square, is we put a strip in the sewing machine. So here you can see, like if this was our sewing machine area, we put a strip in the sewing machine and we just put squares on top, sewing down the side, making sure everything is nice and neat. We have just a little finger space in between, just enough so that you can cut them apart. And this is what we call side one. Now you can use um, a strip like we've actually used here, or you can use a scrap on the side, just as long as it covers the side of the square. So the next step is we have to get a strip on the other side, on the opposite side. So you put a new strip in the sewing machine and turn it around and you're gonna sew on the opposite side. So this one, you can see how we've sewn on both sides. Leave it flat when you're doing your sewing. You don't have to open it up like this to sew on the other side. It's not gonna get caught. So when you look at it, it looks like this. Then you cut them apart. Just take your rotary cutter or your scissors and separate them and press. And when you do, they look like this. So see, it was all folded together like this. You cut them apart and you press and they look like this. Then you take a short strip and it just has to cover the square. So if the square is like three inches, it's gotta be at least three inches long, but I make them a little bit longer because I wanna slap it down and sew it on. And I start sewing at the top, I slap it down, I sew it on, I keep sewing, and I just chain feed these through the sewing machine. And then I'll turn it around, do the opposite side and press, and there I have my basic square. And of course, you can do this for any size and any color. Now when you get ready to come in and trim these into your different triangle units, you always uh, look at the corner of that fabric square because that's where you're gonna start. You're gonna start in one of these corners. And you're going to take your ruler, so I'm, I'm gonna use the original. And remember, you can use the mini, the grande, or the original. For what I'm doing here, I can use the original, I can use the grande, or I could use the mini ruler. All three of these will work for what I'm showing you. So when you um, look at your ruler, um, you look over here to the right side and you see the 90. And the tip of the 90 right there is where these two lines come together. And you're gonna put the tip of that 90 right into the tip or the corner of your fabric square. And you can see from that tip to the edge of the ruler, you have a fourth of an inch. So the way that you use it to trim it up, you're going to automatically get your seam allowances and your work is going to be very nice and neat. So here is the 90, just right in the tip, in the corner. My black lines are gonna go right over the seam and my grid line should go right through that point. So adjust it if you need to, right in the tip, down the seam and through the point. Now when you first get started, you have four corners. So when, you're put, when you put the 90 in here, if these aren't lining up great, if your human element of your cutting, sewing and pressing is maybe a little off, you don't have to start with that corner. Choose a different corner and start with the best corner. Because once you start and you make your first cut, you're going to keep your block even or square with that first cut. So it's like putting your best foot forward. Start with the best corner, hand flat. Don't cut like a spider, hand flat. You'll have more control. And you're gonna trim those off. And just repeat and go around and do that for all four corners. So now as I go around, see this side's already cut. So I have to look at it and make sure that it lines up square. So after your first cut, it's more important that this is nice and square and your seam allowance is correct. If the original lines you started with inside are not lining up perfect, then that's just that human element. But don't go with the imperfection. You've got to stay square on this outside. Once you, once you start cutting, you've got to stay square with those cuts. 
And on your ruler, you can see how we have the vertical and the horizontal grid lines. And so those are there to help look on the outside where you're at to make sure that everything is staying square. So my seam allowance has to stay correct and I have to keep the outside square, even if my inside is not perfect. And I'm just gonna do that to all four corners and this is what we call option one and it is a square in a square. Now you'll have slightly blunted corners and that's good, that helps eliminate any excess bulk that you have when lots of different fabrics come together in the corners. These are pretty small, I'm not gonna worry about saving those, but when you, your piece grows and it gets larger, like if I was cutting this one, I would have bigger pieces that get trimmed off. So let's look at what would get trimmed off. So if I would cut right here, look at these bigger pieces. You can take these bigger pieces and you can sew them onto the side of the square. It doesn't have to be a strip, it can be a scrap. So as long as the scrap is, so let's, here's one that's a little bit bigger. So let's just kind of look at, see what that looks like. So let's say that you have a bigger piece you've cut off. See how you can sew that on to your, your square and use it instead of the strip. And I'm going to show you one of the patterns that we're going to adapt today. And we're going to do our large square first and then take our scraps and go and do our smaller square. So we're going to come back and show you a little bit more about it. When they're small like this, I don't worry about it. But the, big, the larger ones that trim off, I do recycle those on another uh, square. Now let's look at this quilt right here because it's, or this block, it has a lot of option ones in here. So the option one is the square in a square. So when I look at this quilt, I see five of them. Let's see where they're at. So right here in the middle, All right, so right there, there's a square and a square, an option one, right there in the middle. Do you have to worry about grain line? No, we don't have to worry about grain line. You can cut your strips any way that you want, and um, I know that's always a beginner that asks that question. Um, you can use scraps, you can use selvage to selvage, you can use bias strips, it really doesn't matter. We've been doing this with our technique for 30 years, and you can see in the quilt behind me and these blocks that I have down here, that you get beautiful, nice, clean work. We do have all kinds of tips and hints on how to press and how to handle. And if you just follow along with us in any of our videos, and especially in the Premium Club, we really go into depth about uh, pressing and how to handle your work. So back to our block here, you can see that there's that option one there in the middle, and it had a blue square in the middle and all four corners were the same. Now let's look over here at this one. This one is an option one. This was our square in the middle. And look how we had blue on two sides and an, a light color on the other two sides. And you can see it here. And there's another one there. And of course one here. So this is an option one. You can see it here. And this one in this color sequence is the same on all four corners going around. And then you have one in the middle. So, see here's the middle section right there. There's the middle section. And you can see how we had three option ones. Here's one, here's one, and here's one. And then of course this blue one just turns and goes the other direction for here and here. And having just slightly different background colors, Look how you get just a little bit of that square there with that star, but not enough to make it be the dominant part. It just adds more flavor to the quilt by having a little bit different one here. And um, to the block, just makes it really nice and pretty. So here is option one, and you can see how we've used it in this one with two different color variations. And there you can see that one in the center. And when we did the color changes on it, look how we did blue on one side, background on the other, and then we would have blue on one side and background on the other. So depending on what you're making, your color placement is really important. 
Now let's move on to um, option number uh, three. We're going to skip two and we're going to go to option number three. Option three is flying geese. So when you make your flying geese, we're going to trim two sides, leaving the fourth of an inch, just like we did here on the option one. And on the other two sides, we're going to not leave the fourth of an inch. We're going to trim it up sharp. So it's going to look like we're trimming off the seam allowance, but we're actually moving the points and creating a seam allowance in there where we didn't have one. So let's look at these two right here. So here you can see the two flying geese. This is where we're headed. We leave the fourth of an inch on two sides, just like we did all four. Now see that sharp trim? We're gonna trim it nice and sharp in the corner and cut through here and get our two flying geese. And when you come back and sew a fourth and a fourth, your points will be right there exactly where you need them to be. So to trim up sharp, we call it the two step. So put your 90 in there and you're gonna step over two lines. So one, two, and we're gonna put the tip of that line right into the tip or the corner of the square. So see how we just stepped it over two? That's why we call it the two step. Now when you go back to it being nice and sharp, pushed right in that corner, see so you want it nice and sharp, down the seam, when you go back to the point, see how you have a new grid line that goes through to the other side. And I don't look at anything over here, just in the tip, down the seam, and through the grid. Hand flat, make your cut, and see how it's nice and sharp. Turn it and put that on the other, do the same thing on the other side. Put the 90 in, two step it over, make it nice and sharp, keep it square because now you've got a new, um, you've got the outside to keep square. That grid line is going right through that point, perfect, and flat, and trim it. Now on the other two sides, we're going to do the 90 and we're going to leave it in there because it's going to leave the fourth of an inch. We want to leave the fourth of an inch. Keep it square, look at your outside edges right through the point, flip it, put the 90 in there and leave it. Then we're going to slide down to the sharp two step and we're going to cut it in half and there's my two perfect flying geese. If I wanted traditional flying geese where they all go um, in a row, You wanted to kind of mix them like that since those color the color placement or if you wanted a star I love stars and this little star block right here is my go-to block and in the reference book we're going to come in here and look about and look at how to change sizes now if you're following any of our patterns we're going to tell you exactly what sizes of squares and strips that you need. And then when you go to the pattern, a lot of them, there's over 30 patterns in here, but a lot of them have multiple block sizes. So like for that little star right there, it's on page 69 in your book. And I'm gonna get there in just a moment. Okay, so on page 69, we have the star, and in this particular one, we put an option one in the middle. So you have your option one in the middle, and your points on the outside edge, and of course you would have a corner piece in there. And the quilt here is telling you about how to make this one, and you come over here and you see it's a six inch star. But when you get to the end of the pattern, Look, you have a three inch, a four, a five, a six, a seven, and an eight. And even when you turn the page, you have a nine, 10, and 11, and 12. So you have a three inch star all the way up to a 12 inch star. And they're gonna tell you what sizes of squares and strips, and even give you an estimated amount for 12 blocks. So each pattern has the pattern information and additional fabric and block size info. Now. The charts start in on page 34. So if you go to page 34 in your book, let's say that you need a square in a square to be a certain size. So let's just play like we're going to make, let's just play like that we're gonna make this quilt right here, this block. So you can see the, you can see the block, right? And we know that it goes together. This is the middle piece and it's one, two, three pieces 
One, two, three, one, two, three. So you're going to have three um, sections. So let's just look. Let me scoot it over here so they can see all of that. I want them to see the, the block. So this is putting a block together in what we call a nine patch section. So you're going to have three patches or three squares. And inside this square, you can do anything that you want. And we're going to do that in three rows. And this is called a nine patch block. Blocks, when you break them down, are put together either in nine patch units or four patch units. Those are, are um, however many sections you have across. Now, when we look at the middle one here, we know all of those are option one. So inside these are going to be an option one. And we know there's one here and here. So we have five option ones that are going to be in this block. And then over here in the corners, we have half square triangles. So we just have half square triangles in those corners. And that's option four. We haven't done that yet. I'll show you option four here in a minute. So you can make this any size that you want. But let's say that we want to make it a 12 inch sewn. Remember, you have to work in the sewn sizes when you're doing pattern adapting. You have to work in that smaller measurement. Remember, a cut size is larger, and that would be a 12 and a half inch cut, uh, cut block. So this is a 12 and a half inch cut with raw edges. When it sews down into a quilt, it's a 12 inch sewn, meaning no raw edges. So if this is a 12 inch block and we have three um, units that are going to go into that 12 inches. 3 into 12 is 4. So that means all of these sections and the S is for sewn are 4 inch sewn. Okay, so if they're 4 inches sewn, that means that they're 4 and a half cut with raw edges. So for this one here, see how it still has raw edges on it, it would be a 4 and a half. And when it gets completely sewn in, it sews down to four. You work with the, the smaller sizes when you're doing pattern adapting. So if we need a four inch option one, we're going to come in here to our chart on page 34. And here's our option one chart. And up here at the top, it says, what is the sewn size you want? Well, we've already determined that it's four inches. So I'm going to come down here and find my four inches. And I'm going to move across horizontally. And the next column tells me what size to cut my center square. So I need to know what size to cut this. So at the top it says cut center square. And then um, in the last row it's going to tell me what size to cut the width of my strip to go around. So when I'm making my pattern or drawing it out, I'm going to say uh, 3 and 3 eighths. And I'm going to put a C by it because that's cut. And then this one is a 1 and 7 eighths. Now, when it's your center square, it has to be cut exactly because that's the very first part of the sizing. But the strips that you sew around, because we trim them off, if you don't want to cut one and seven eighths, you can bump it up to a two inch. So in real life, I'm going to cut those strips two inches because it's easier to do. But I have to cut the center square three and three eighths. I cannot change the size on it or it will change the size of my block. It'll make it larger. So those would be for all of my option ones. It's just that um, easy to do. Now let's go ahead and uh, since we've looked at our flying geese, let's go ahead and have a flying geese question. Okay, let me draw the flying geese out and then we'll see what that question is. Okay. Now um, a lot of patterns, a lot of patterns will tell you when you get ready to make your flying geese. Let me put one up here. Okay, a lot of patterns will tell you to cut a rectangle. So it's going to give you a cut uh, size of your rectangle. So let's say that it's two and a half by four and a half. So that means it's going to sew down to a two by four. So if this rectangle, a lot of patterns tell you to cut a rectangle, and then they're going to tell you to cut a square. 
and you're going to put that square on the rectangle and sew down the corner and then put it on the other one and sew down the corner. So if you have this rectangle size, that's all you need for your flying goose if you're looking at another pattern. Um, or, um, you know, that's usually where people are at. They have a pattern in their hand and they want to adapt it over to the system. So we know that it's, they told us to cut a rectangle two and a half by four and a half. We know that's the cut size of a flying goose. So if we back it down to the sewn size of two by four, then we just come over here to our chart and up at the top of the chart, it says, what is the sewn size that you're looking for? So come in here and find the two by four. It tells you what size of center square, what size of strips. So you would sew up your basic square, trim it up, and it would turn out to be a flying goose with, see these cut edges? That's two and a half by four and a half. And when you get it put into your quilt, it's going to sew down to a two by four. Okay, so let's see what the question is that Steve's got over there. Uh, she thought that the, you should have a quarter of an inch <coughs> seam allowance on your flying goose. We do have a quarter of an inch seam allowance on our flying geese. So let's look at that. And that's also one of the most popular questions for someone that is a newbie to our system um, because it looks like we've trimmed it off. Now, when you look at your ruler here, here's a fourth of an inch and a fourth of an inch. So we're going to put this in the corner and we're going to see exactly where our seam is when this gets sewn into um, a quilt. So when you put this on here like this and you see where those seams are, bam, there's your point right there. Now let's look at... So it moved the points. It, you, you moved the points. Yeah, you moved the points. You have to create a seam allowance in here because see, when this was just a plain square, this was just a plain square, there wasn't a seam allowance in there. If you left the fourth of an inch on there like an option one, let's just look and see what happens. If you trim it like this and leave that fourth of an inch and then you cut it in half, when you come back in here and sew, you're going to have blended points. You don't need that on there because we're cutting it in half. And if you need, if you need more, if you're not getting it, say something and we'll go, we'll go over it again because that is a very common question. It's something that um, all of the newbies don't, um, don't see or don't uh, recognize. So let me see on this quilt here. See how I, this one is all sewn, and here are flying geese. So let's look at it. So let's look at where those points are. Because now we've got it sewn into our quilt. There's no raw edges on that flying goose, see? And look how all of our points are right exactly where they need to be. Okay? All right, if anybody has more questions about the flying geese, it's very common to have these questions and I want you to learn. So if you have more questions, you don't get it, you need to see something else, uh, put, those, put those comments or questions in there so that we can help you with that. Okay, so we've um, told you how to cut them. We've told you how to read the charts in the book, how to look for them um, in the quilts. And our next one that we're going to do is a um, half square triangle. And then I'm gonna, I have a quilt that we're going to adapt for a customer. So lots of times people um, look at a quilt and they're like, we call it square eyes. That once you start learning the square and the square system and the units, then you can start looking at quilts and blocks and you can start breaking them down into the units. And when you break them down into the square and the square units, then they become very easy. Uh, to maneuver and manipulate and so everyone can be a master piecer when you learn the square and the square system because it helps improve on that human element of your cutting and your sewing and your pressing. So in this particular block up here, this is an option one right here and a plain square and another option one. And then this is an option one right here and here and here. And then these are the half square triangles, the option for the next one that we're going to do. So beautiful quilt, beautiful block, but it can be intimidating until you learn the square and square system. So let's look at half square triangles. And in this particular um, quilt here, you can see these half square triangles in the corner. With, um, and we just wanted to put, we put them together can they see this corner well? Let me bring it down. So in this one, we had the um, kind of two-toned half-square triangle in the corner, 
and then we're going to have this one here and we like to cut our corner pieces big you can see how they're cut larger we call that overcut and then we trim it up after we have everything done in our um, quilt so let's look at how we're going to make half square triangles half square triangles are in almost everything that you do and they can be pretty um, mean and notorious at causing you trouble Okay, so with our flying geese, we learned how to do that two-step because we're cutting through those corners. So when we make our half-square triangles, let me find just one here. When we make our half-square triangles, just like we have that sharp point where the fabric goes all the way to the end, it extends all the way to the end, that's what we need to do here. So just like we did the two-step on two on half-square triangles, we're going to do it on all four. So I'm just going to put the 90 in there and step it over. And I'm just going to, just all the different things that you um, always do, hand flat, in the tip, down the seam, through the grid, all of that that we've already um, learned. We're just going to keep doing, keeping it square as we go around. And we're going to two-step all four corners. Put the 90 in there, step it over. Look on the outside edges where you've already cut. Make sure, take a moment to make sure that everything is nice and square, the best that you can be. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And anytime you go right up to the tip, that means you're going to cut through there. So we're going to cut both directions. And there's my four half square triangles. No dog ears, no papers to peel, no, no messiness, just everything nice and clean and ready to go. And that's how we did our corners here in this particular block. I'm not sure how you can see those triangles there. And then in this one here, look at this beautiful block with these triangles in the corner. So on this one, we have um, two triangles put together like this and another two here with the overcut on the corner. And this unit right here is an option 11. And when you look here in the block, you see four of those. And um, you can see it, see how the point could go out or the point could go in. And I'm gonna, sh this is our option 11, so I'm gonna see if I can kinda show you um, how we got the option 11. So this was my square in the middle. You can see how I started out just like this with my square in the middle. I put my black strips on and I trimmed leaving the fourth of an inch. So you can see how we've got the sharp point because of that. Then we put these red strips on again. Look how we two-stepped all four corners and we cut all four corners. And there's our option 11. Beautiful, 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 and just that that easy to do. So those go in the corner and we sew our unit together just like that and that's our corner unit. So in this quilt we use the half square triangles and option 11 in the corners. These are two flying geese here, a plain rectangle and a plain square. This block has 87 pieces in it and look how nice and flat and clean, just really pristine work. I had a um, on one of the text messages I got, I think it was yesterday, it was really a nice, it was a big long text, and she said that um, she found Square in a Square last October when we did Quilt Club Week. We had um, like a, it would be like going to a quilt show where you have teachers and demos and lectures and all of those different fun things. We have a, a special Facebook page called Quilt Club Week that everybody was on. And then they went to the, the portal where the Quilt Club Week classes and lectures and even some live things like this we did. And they all got to uh, meet each other and enjoy and all watch the same class and comment on the same class or lecture. And uh, they really, really, really had a great time. 
So we had a lot of new people coming to us from Quilt Club Week. Well, this particular um, a lady, she said, I, I found you during Quilt Club Week. And she said, I knew about Square in a Square from a few years back. But she said, I was busy and I didn't get to investigate and I didn't follow up. And she, she said, man, was I sorry that I didn't get to do that. She said, but now, she said, I've taken uh, some early retirement. And she said, I've always done teaching. I've always taught quilting. And she said, I'm really getting into the square in a square. So here she is a teacher, which means she, she knows some stuff and her work looks good if she's teaching. But she said, I look at my work from two years ago. And she said, I look at my work just from October, from learning the square in a square and what we call the science of patchwork and how we put quilts together. And she said, it is night and day. She said, I can't even believe, you know, all of the different things we've learned with pressing and cutting and the pattern adapting, how to take any design and adapt it over. And she said, I want to just keep learning. I want to just keep going. And so uh, that was really exciting uh, text to get to, to be able to hear that excitement and, and uh, almost see the sparkle in her eyes from all the different things that she was learning. And, and what we do here at Square and Square, all the different things, the pressing, how to look at quilts, how to adapt other things, how to take maybe even a kit that you got, and we're going to talk about that in the next quilt. Um, and um, they gave me this much fabric, but what if I needed more fabric? How do I work with that now that I want to make the quilt uh, using the square in a square? So before we move into the next quilt, um, pattern adapting, Steve, do we have any questions? The uh, only question that I have is about wool mats. Oh, about wool mats for pressing. I love them. Uh, buy a nice one. Buy one as big as you can um, afford or have space for. I have one that's about 14 inches by 14 inches that I use. And um, it's also on our website. And um, I highly recommend it. Now, when you get a wool mat, do not use steam from your iron on the wool mat. And do not use a, a spray starch. No liquid on your wool. Okay? They just wondered about a brand or anything or anything um, to look for. I, I don't really know. Um, um, I don't really know anything about any of the different brands. I know the one that's on the website is one that I like and one that is a good one. Um, when we got ready to put them on the website, we kind of looked around and researched for different ones that we thought were the best quality for the best price. So you're going to be able to find some that are more expensive than mine on the website. But um, the company that we have on there is, is a good company. So it's not always about how much money you spend. So, but I don't really know anything about um, all of the well, different. I know there's some that have Australia wool and yeah. stuff like that. But that's it. Yeah. Right. And I'm sure there is a difference in some of that, um, but um, I don't know. I guess that's all I have to say about it. Okay. Um, let's look at this next one here. Where is Could my Could have saved a lot of money on tools. Could have saved a lot of money on tools. Right. You can. Mm -hmm. um, because we have one ruler that makes all of the different units, and it makes them um, any size. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk about... Um, so this is the um, original one, and um, I'll just take a minute and talk about it and the other two so that you can see them and see the difference. Um, okay, so this is the original one, the one that we um, started out with 30 years ago. It has the 90 over here. That's what you've seen me use um, all day today. And... Um, It'll do any size that you want, and that's for the traditional looking stuff. The 60 and the 120 here, those are the ones when you have long, thin points, um, like a storm at sea. Um, Steve, uh, see if uh, on that stack of quilts right there, that is that storm at sea there so that they can see. Uh, let me see some of the shapes. Okay, here, I got some here, Steve. You got it? Yeah, so see some of these long, thin, um, these all start out with a diamond in the middle. So, um, okay, so can you kind of see, instead of a square in the middle, we started out with a diamond in the middle, and we put the strips on the side, and then the different ways you trim the corners for all the different units, those are the options that we call option 18 to option 39. 
those are the ones that are here in the diamond because they all start out with a diamond in the middle. So you saw um, square and a square today, you saw flying geese, you saw half square triangles. Those are the main units for the square. Now, <clears throat> the main units for the diamond are, you can leave it in a whole piece, like, play like this is all one piece. That's one of the main ones. You can cut it in half, just like we did for flying geese. We call these Canadian geese. You can cut it into the half square triangles. So, um, just like we had half square triangles, you can have the long thin half square triangles. This is 18, this is 19, and then these are the rooftops and we call them 20. And then as the options go up, this is really a cool one here. Um, I think this is option 25. See how you get, you get this triangle shape and this and this, and there's a really cool quilt it's called the Hurricane. Look for the Hurricane video look for the hexy star video um i know you can find those on youtube and on the, our facebook page um really some great great units with the diamonds so these diamond ones we use the um 60 and the 120. now when you use the 120 i want you to notice there's a fourth of an inch here and there's a 120 with an eighth of an inch so when you're doing any of these and you need the 120 make sure you're looking at the book and you know do I need the fourth of an inch or the eighth of the inch, okay? Now, remember when we trimmed our flying geese, we had to trim those corners different to cut it in half. So if you wanna make these Canadian geese, you have to trim these corners different. And instead of a fourth of an inch, like we have here at the top on them, um, this one with the square, we did the two-step, but with the diamond, you use the 120 with the eighth. So that's just kind of a quick, um, a quick thing with the, um, with the diamond shapes and so that's the original and you have your horizontal and vertical lines to help keep your unit square as you go the other lines are on here as different options come into play with what you're doing then this is the mini one and this is the next one we had oh, we had a lot of people asking for a smaller ruler and I said well you don't need another ruler this original makes everything and it makes them every size and they're like yes but if I'm in a small space or if I'm working on smaller units they said it would be more convenient if we had a smaller tool so I'm like so it's for convenience they wanted a smart a smaller tool so it has your 120s here and your 90s and your 60s and you would use it just like um, we did the others you'd put your 90 in there whether it's on the mini or the grande or the original but I wanted to add something to, different to it that would give it more benefits and I thought well how many times do I have this on my table and I need to check a size of a square or a size of a strip or I need to cut something so I put this little four inch um, corner unit on here so that I can trim up squares, measure squares, check sizes of squares. So for example, in this one here, if I was ready to come in here and trim this one up, I would come in here and put my little corner unit on my mini on there, and I could get it, I could see my lines, I would say, okay, this needs to be one and a fourth, so I have it one and a fourth, and I can come in here and trim up my corners, or I can cut my squares. There's just lots of different things you can do with that little corner unit. So I love that on the mini, and I use the mini a lot. I use the mini more than I ever dreamed I would. So my customers were right. They wanted a mini. Then we have the uh, Grande. Now the Grande's just been out a year. It just came out last spring. And the reason why we made a grande was because when it comes time to cut the diamond in the center. So where's my diamonds? We were using the original ruler to cut the diamonds here in the middle from a strip. But it was just so hard for people to figure out which line and how to lay it on the strip. Um, they struggled with it. So I was trying to figure out a way to help my students so they would not struggle with cutting this diamond in the middle because it was very, very simple. So I decided that I would make a ruler and I would put a color-coded line on it. So here's the red 
and it says 60 on it. This is the, the one that you use to cut the diamond. And so I thought, okay, what else can I do to the ruler so that I can get more stuff on it because I never want to make a ruler that just does one thing. I want to put as much in a ruler as I can, but I don't want it so crowded that you can't see what it really does. So I really loved my little um, four inch corner, but I needed one that was bigger. So now we have the nine inch corner. So it can go up to nine inches to cut squares, trim up blocks, whatever. And I thought, well, the other thing I do is cut strips, and I have to grab another ruler to cut strips. So I thought, well, if we make it a little bit wider and a little bit longer and put these lines on it like this, then we can cut our squares and strips with it. And we can cut those diamonds. And I could add the regular 90 section like you have on your other ones so that you can cut bigger, bigger, um, bigger pieces when you get ready to get really big because sometimes we were using this one and butting another ruler up next to it. So we made the Grande, the multi-purpose ruler, and I love it, love it, love it. I use it um, so much. And I'm kind of um, falling in love with it as far as trimming, um, because when you get ready to trim up to the tip on a block, like with these other ones, you put your 90 in here and you step it over two, and you, that would how you would get your close trim, like for your flying geese or your half square triangles. And with the grande, we just have the one line. So if you needed to leave the fourth of an inch, then of course you would put your two blue ones in there and it leaves the fourth of an inch. And if you need to go to the tip, you just have the one line and you just drag it down and see how this is a big piece. So the bigger grande ruler and you make your cut and there you go. So that's the, the Grande one, and I, I really love the Grande. I use I use all three of them um, probably all the same amount of time. All right, so there's one more design. Do we have questions? There's one more design that's really pretty easy. I want to show you guys. We had a customer um, send it in, and let me see what I did with it. Here we go. Any questions, Steve, before I no, jump in? No, just comments. Uh, some have used a little bit of uh, water with their wool mat and have been fine. And well, they, it can start stinking like a wet dog, so. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at this one. So, um, a customer sent this to me and she said, I want to adapt this over to um, square and a square. And she said, I, I don't quite have my square eyes yet, so I can't really see the best way to do it. And usually there's several ways to approach it and do it. And so you always want to pick one that's the easiest way to do. Then the other thing was that she said that it's a kit, so there's only a certain amount of fabric. And she's like, how do I know that I'm going to have enough fabric for all of it? Well, um, and it's all in, it's all kind of in tones of grays and blacks. So to me, the easiest thing to do on, so that you don't, I don't want to be boxed in a corner when it comes to, am I going to have enough fabric? So on this quilt, it would be really easy to add just a few more fat quarters or a few more scraps in the grays and black tones and in your light colors. So I would just add a few more colors in, or a few more, not colors, but a few different shades of gray and black or background in, a couple of fat quarters throw them in, you'll be fine. If you added two or three more of your darks and two or three more of your lights and just mixed them in like they're part of the kit, you're going to be just fine with it. Now, they actually want you to make the block. Let me scoot it over here. Okay, can you get all that in the screen? Okay. So they want you to make the block in the quilt. They show it all with half square triangles. Can you pull it down a little bit? Like that? Yeah. Okay. And they actually want you to um, I don't know how well you can see the block here, but they want this to be the block. Just like this. And it's all half square triangles. But I'm going to make, and the blocks just repeat, but I'm actually going to make two blocks. I'm going to make an option one. Is 
and pull it out so that you can see all of this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm actually going to make an option one, and I'm going to make it pretty big, like 10 inches, and of course sewn. And then I'm going to make the block that goes next to it all of the half square triangle units. So it's actually just going to be four sets of the half square triangles. And those are going to be the two blocks um, I'm going to make. So um, if this is going to be a 10 inch, can you see here how we have, here's one section, second, third, fourth. So if I did uh, two inches, two, four, six, eight, that's not going to be big enough. If I do two and a half, if all of these are two and a half sewn, then this would be a 10 inch block. So this is all I need for my measurements to go in and make this whole quilt. So I'm gonna come in here on page 34 and I'm gonna to go to my option one to my 10 inch and it says cut. So I always use a C for cut or S that way when I look at my numbers, I know what it is. So my center square is gonna be for my option ones here are going to be a seven and a half and my strips are four and a fourth okay and I'm going to make these bigger ones first because this is going to be a big um, this is going to be a big option it's even it's going to be bigger than this so you can see when I come in here and trim this up when I come in here and trim this up look at how big these triangle sections are here so these pieces I'm going to recycle in for my smaller half square triangle units. So I'm going to take all of these, you know, pieces that come off and I'm going to sew it on the side of my square for my half square triangles. And then that way I'm going to get a lot more use out of my fabric and it's going to go much, much farther. So now let's look at our size that we need for our half square triangles. So we know it's a two and a half sewn. And let's go to our option four chart. And it says sewn size, uh, two and a half. That means that my, you need to kind of draw out your basic square. Draw as much as you need to help you know what you're doing. So this is my, this is your basic square. Here's my basic square. I'm gonna do four and three fourths cut from my center. And my strips are going to be two and five eighths cut. So that's all I needed to do to ad using my reference books and adapting the square and square system over to the to the other design that you wanted to make. And then these are just going to be sewn together in rows, and as many rows as you want. And if they're ten inch blocks, then you know if you do five across, then you're going to have 50 inches. You know, if you need 70 inches, then do seven of them across. You can do very easy to figure size um, doing them in 10 inch, 10 inches and um, very easy to do. And since these are large and you're going to have these corners that you cut off and put on for your other ones, uh, it's going to make your fabric go way, way uh, farther. So um, that's pretty much all I had planned today to show you guys, but if you have any questions, I'll, I'll stay on here and, and uh, answer questions. And uh, What would be the first book and ruler you would recommend? Okay, so we always recommend um, the reference book, Volume 1. These, um, it has the first 17 options, so that's all of the options that start out with the square. And it's going to have your charts. It has over 30 quilts. Let's just kind of flip through here a little bit. Let's look down here. So you've got lots of pages of, of information. This book is the book Time and Time. I know there's a lot of you guys on here that watch all the time and you can testify that this is the book. In fact, we recommend that you, so that you can keep it nice and not wear it out, take it to like an office supply place, get the covers laminated and put it on a spiral. And then um, I even put little tabs on mine. Here's another one. Here's an old one that I've had, and you can see how I put tabs on mine 
so that I can go in and find certain things um, quickly. There's a lot of little hidden jewels in here that we talk about in the different webinars, and um, um, it's nice to be able to, to know, bam, there they are. Extra charts, pattern adapting, um, um, how many squares in a strip. I mean, we talk about all of these charts during the different teachings. So definitely, I think this is a must book. And I've always said that, um, you know, I have a lot of friends that live in the hurricane areas here along the coast and in the south. And I'm always like, man, if I had to get out quick, I'm going to have a suitcase full of fabric, some good blades in my rotary cutters. I'm going to have this book and my ruler and I can go somewhere and stay and wait out a storm and have everything that uh, I need from you could make quilts endlessly is um, I would bet 90% of the time every question someone says ask I say do you have the reference book go to page 62 I think what you're looking for is right there you know or look at that color sequence or the star you want I think is that four inch on page 69 Where's the snail's tail? Well, it's in here on page, you know, whatever. So very definitely this book, uh, you won't be sorry that you have it. And then I always recommend the original ruler. Um, it's the one that we started with. It's uh, the medium size one. And um, I always say that one. Um, and then the other ones, it's just kind of up to you whether you add them and, and um, kind of where you're at in your sewing and quilting. If you're shipping, if we're shipping stuff far away, if it's going across a border or across the ocean, I recommend that you get as much of any of it as you can because the shipping really doesn't change whether you're getting five rulers or one ruler or one book and, you know, get, get two of the books or whatever. And if you have a friend, you know, and you guys can get them together in the same package, then you can even, it's even better on shipping that way too. And I know a lot of people are kind of frustrated with shipping right now through the pandemic and with the post office and everything. And um, we have uh, UPS or uh, FedEx or, or uh, post office and Steve will help you um, so that you can get the best um, shipping on everything. Um, if you use a UPS or some of those um, and we're shipping it across the, the border, the customs and all of that are automatically added into all of that and the information on the website um, yeah, they'll contact you. Yeah, they'll contact you about it. the day it. we ship it. Yeah, about the day that we fill out the paperwork and ship it, they'll contact you. And if you have any questions about any of that, email Steve. He's great with all the shipping and the logistics of everything. And he'll make sure that, um, you know, there's certain areas of the U.S. that we know that if a package goes through that area, that, you know, the post office maybe isn't a good one to ship it with if it's headed to that area. We know that that's a congested area you know, from our experience this past year and with, you know, a post office or we know, okay, well, going to this area, then I think priority mail is the best way to do it. You're going to get it in two days with UPS. You're going to get it four or whatever. So he'll definitely, he definitely has a knowledge on getting that to you the best way. So okay. don't hesitate to ask him a question on that. Okay. Going over the flying geese adaptation. Okay. Um, to bring to go from cut size to sewn size, do you take off a fourth on all four sides to get to the sewn size, and then go to the chart to find your sewn size? I think you got it, but let's go over it. I think you got it. It's it's really easy. There's there in the quilt world. There's two sizes. There's the cut size, and a cut size has raw edges. And then there's a sewn size, meaning no raw edges. So these pieces are sewn. There's no raw edges on it. So let's think about a flying goose. If you have a rectangle, um, and most of the time a pattern is going to tell you to cut the rectangle and then put the squares on the side, and they're going to tell you to cut the rectangle. We're going to use these numbers. They're going to tell you to cut that rectangle two and a half by four and a half. So um, that means that this flying goose is going to sew down to a two by four. And that sewn measurement is what you need to use your chart. So just go into page 34. And at the top of your uh, very first column, it says what's the sewn size you're looking for. 
So let's come down here and find our two by four and then move across. And at the top of those columns, it's gonna tell you what size to cut your center square and what size to cut your strips. So when you get this cut into your flying geese, it's actually, because it has raw edges on it, it's actually gonna be a two and a half by four and a half. And when you sew it into your quilt, it's gonna go down to the two by four, okay? All right, more questions? Make sure you tell all your friends about our free Wednesday webinars and uh, you'll get notification about them. But once you're signed up for the webinars, you're in for all of 2021 and they have replays. So make sure you go back and watch our other Wednesdays that we've had here in 2021. Well, and uh, our text number again, 817-713-2879. And of course the website is squareinasquare.com. And email is Steve at Square in a Square. Or Jody. Or Jody at Square in a Square. Um, where's the, did you talk about a nine patch this year in one of the webinars previous? The very first webinar in January, the quilt was the four patch Road to Nowhere, but we also did a demo for the nine patch. So go and watch. And then what about 16 patch? That's just adaptation. A 16 of a patch, patch is just double. Uh, four, four patch, yeah. The okay. six, uh, like in the postage stamp star, we did a double four patch, uh, so, so that's a the sixteen first patch. Webinar, so it's in the same area that mm -hmm. they're at. So it's right here where to, you're at. To Just go January. back to the January one. It was the very first one that we did. Okay. Has four patches and nine patches. You'll love it, and then that way you'll know. Okay, this tool is something I want, or hey, I don't need that. We do have, a, some, they were asking about sale on products. We do have some bundles that are at discounted prices. So I'm look sure. at the bundles and go in there and look. And some of them you can you can even mix the rulers you want, right? Do we have that one on there? Uh, yes. And yeah. then, uh, Where you can pick the three rulers you want or whatever. Uh, no. No? Uh, okay. Sorry about that. He said no. That's not on there. You can get... Uh, well, the original and the reference book that you recommend. Okay, so first. you can get the original and reference book in, in a bundle. And if you've had the ruler by itself, you can just get books. You, we have a book pack. Okay, and if you already have the ruler but none of the books, you can get a book pack. Yeah, okay. so there's just a few So just go in there and there. snoop around, and if you have questions, not finding what you want, just email us and we'll do the best we can to help you with what you need. Will you be teaching uh, on piece borders and how to figure the width? Yes. Uh, one of the things that we're, uh, with our, our premium club, we always have a theme. And our premium club, we're working on, uh, Steve, maybe you can uh, put the quilt, the camera over on this quilt. So on Mondays, our webinars are for the premium club, which are people who have the paid membership. And if you want to be a part of the premium club, you can do that. Steve will send you the information with uh, all of it. There's all of the videos are in the premium club and we have oh, hundreds of hours of teaching in there. And our current one that we're doing is this one that we're doing block of the week. And so we just started last week. So on Monday, we did this first block and Monday of this week, we did this one and you can use your stash or you can use a kit and it's not too late to join. You can join it by joining Premium Club and having access to everything, or you can join just as Block of the Week. And one of the things that we're really highlighting and teaching uh, this year is we're teaching settings and borders. So how to take any blocks, whether they're 12 inch, 10 inch, or whatever, and how to set them together differently with, uh, with the options, whether they're, they make a secondary design or whether it's just pieced borders. On, um, on Monday's class, we had this option 11 right here, and we talked about how to use it for a border. And um, we're just really, really pushing in and, and doing the settings and the borders. Now, um, a lot of that, like in what we did today, uh, this is the way the free um, webinars are set up to where we um, um, either do an overview like this and do a question and answer time, 
or go through the steps on a certain project and show you how to do that. And with the projects, each one will keep increasing in and building on what you've learned before. So, you know, it, it's kind of a sequence. So you need to go back and watch the first ones and keep building up with us. And about every second or third one, we do kind of an overview like this and look at quilts that people have submitted and they want help with and, and uh, teach the pattern adapting and can teach some borders and things like that. Um, but the, the in-depth stuff um, is, is done in the premium club and done right now with the block of the week. Uh -huh. In-depth with pressing and that sort of thing. Pressing and borders. Okay. Well, just a reminder, because we're on YouTube, right mm -hmm. now we're uh, broadcasting YouTube and Facebook all at the same time. Right. But the best place is to sign up and go to our portal, which you can see right. the videos. That way, because yeah. somebody was saying they're on our YouTube channel. Well, that's a good place, but there's more if they go right. and sign up. So and get right now with this, with our live Wednesday webinars, when we do them live and we broadcast, it's on YouTube, it's on our Facebook page, and then it's here in the, the webinar portal. Um, and if you sign up with your email, then it allows you to go back in and watch the past ones. And once you sign up, you're in, you can go, you don't have to keep signing up every Wednesday. And, we'll, uh, um, and uh, you get an email notification that we're getting ready to do it and all that, you don't have to miss them. And it's, uh, it's just easier if you do it that way. Instead of a hit and miss. If you're serious about learning and you're serious about dedicating yourself to becoming a better piecer, then sign up with your email and, and be a part. Be a part. Go, go whole hog, get in. Jump in with both feet, the water's great. <laughs> Um, just had a question about how would you do a geese border? How would you do a flying geese border? Well, there's um, a two. Basically, there's only two ways that you can do a flying geese border. So let's look down here and do. Um, let me get my little scratch paper here. So a flying goose is a rectangle. So of course you can put them together the long side. Put the long side together, meaning. And that's traditional flying geese, you know, going, going around your quilt. Or you can do them long way, like bricks. Like that. So once again, you have to work with the sewn measurement. So let's say that your sewn measurement is two by four. So if you're putting it along the quilt like this, you're gonna have to figure out how many flying geese you need by the two inch measurement. So let's say your quilt is 20 by 20. So two goes into 2010. So I'm going to need 10 flying geese going across the top, the bottom, and the sides. And remember when you do a border, you always have this little corner section here. So if this is your quilt, this is my quilt right here, 20 by 20. So if I have all my flying geese going up and down and I have 10 of them in there, like this, then you're going to have these corners. Well, you're going to have two, two of these will fit in each corner. So you'd have to have two, four, six, eight extra. So you'd have to have 10, 10, 10, and 10. So that's 40 flying geese and eight. That means I have to have 48 of these flying geese and I get two flying geese out of every square. So I need to start out with 24 squares. And of course my two by four size is in my quilt. If you're doing it the long way like this, then you have the four inch Four goes into 25 times, so that means I'm going to have five flying geese along each side. So basically half. Uh, I think that means I would only need 12 flying geese. 12 squares to get my 24 flying geese. Okay? That's actually an easy one to do. Flying geese are easy. How do you salvage an option that the center square may have been cut too big? Oh, that's an easy one, too. Okay, let's say that this is the, um, the option one, and let's say that this square wound, winds up too big. You needed it. Uh, let's say that you needed it to cut it three and seven eighths, and you cut it three and five eighths. Sometimes it's easy to get off on those. So flip it over on the back. You can always cut smaller. Um, 
I'm actually going to do it on this one because I don't want to cut that one. Okay, let's say we want to cut it smaller. I'm going to go to my grande, and let's see what it really is. It's a three inch. Let's say that I should cut it two and a half. I'm just going to go back down into, and I'm going to cut two sides off. And then I have to come back in here, and I'm going to sew a strip here and here, and then I'll come back in and trim it up for my option one. And there you go. So if you had your scraps, you can put your scrap on the side. Here's some bigger red scraps. So that that's big enough to go on the corner, and this one's big enough to go on. And then you would just go back in with your ruler and square it up again to whatever, or trim it into whatever option you were making that you needed it to be. Another question? Okay, so about every two or three weeks, I look at uh, patterns that people have sent in, and we do an adapting here on them and tell them how to do them. I've got a couple um, that people have sent that I haven't done. Um, this one has got multiple options in it. They're not hard, but they're not the beginning options. So um, we'll do this one soon. I knew we had a lot of beginners today, so I didn't want to jump in on one that was a little harder. This one was simple and easy. And then I've got another one that's a little bit harder too. Um, I, I don't. When I show the harder ones, I don't want to lose the beginners. So when you were showing that. Um... How are the two flying geese going to go into the corners on the sample that you just showed? Um, you have to decide which direction. The main thing is about the direction. So um, uh, you have to decide which direction you want them to go. So let's say this is your quilt. And these are those little square corners. Oh, you know what, Steve? Um, grab the, the, the big train quilt that's got flying geese kind of going around it we can show. So if these are all going that direction, you have to decide which direction you want them to go. They can go, this? yes, they can go the same direction or they can go that direction because two flying geese make up a square. So they can go either direction, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna need your help to hold the corner. Okay. So this one is our um, transcontinental railroad one. This is uses some of the railroad fabric, and this one uh, did also. So let's just look at this top row. Grab that corner. Okay, so here you can kind of see how uh, when they go, when they go, see, then you can decide where you want to turn anytime you want. But two flying geese make up a square and will be the same size as the long side or the short side of your flying geese. So that's really a pretty one to do. And we only have, if you're like this big, uh, this one is like 105 by 105 and it uses our uh, transcontinental railroad fabric and it tells the history of it. And there's only like four kits left of this one. So if you're interested in this one, you need to do it. Let's hold it up higher. We're gonna go down so they can see. It uses the panel all in one piece. And it's really, really a pretty one. You can see an overall picture of it on the website. Okay, let's see if we have any last minute questions that have come in. Remember our text number is 817-713-2879. We're all about teaching and education. So don't hesitate to send a question. And a website, squareinasquare.com. And email steve at squareinasquare. Okay, make sure you sign up and join the webinars with your email list so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we're having. And I'd love for you to join our Block of the Week or to join our Premium Club. And they, uh, we have special Facebook pages for those also. Tell all of your friends about us and uh, come. we'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks. Bye-bye.